is attending our worship service today. It's good to see new faces at the back there and welcome you to our Citrus Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. Whoever over here that I don't know your name, I'd like to welcome you as well. Patty. I would like to share with you that as announcement mentioned earlier, you may find this colorful flyer. It's going to be on 17. September 17, we'll have a health fair on our campus here. If you work in a medical field on any level of capacity, you are surely most welcome to help us. We're targeting reach the community. It's all free. There's some food to give away and some gifts as well. But uh, we love to have your prayers and your support for that endeavor. I praise the Lord for our Citrusite Church family who think about ways that we can uh, be viable and be efficient in this part of our community. So welcome to our worship service this morning. We'll continue to the theme from the book of Revelations, Delusional Culture War, from the book of Revelation chapter 13, which is one of the books that being very uh, discussed deeply and many opinion about it, but we'll attempt to look at it together prayerfully and how God can use this moment, this time together to understand some special message that he uh, preserved for us from the scripture. So please join me as we pray. Father God, we come to the house of the Lord, the house of prayer. We come because we want to fellowship. We want to hear some voices of praises and singing. We want to hear the reading of the scripture. We want to hear so we can keep the offering and our tithe. Overall, Lord, we want to hear and feel the presence of God in our lives. So we pray the Lord, help us. We come with different expectations. We come that we may hear the voice of the Lord. We come we have some burden in our hearts. We want to lift it up to the throne of grace. We also, we want you to give us peace, surpass understanding. But most of all, dear Lord, we pray. As we share the word of God, let the Spirit of the Lord speak for us. Speak through us. Speak with us. Or in spite of us. May the word give you honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Delusional culture war. As we meditate on this message this morning, I'm sure I'm not alone looking at things happening in our community. It's so challenging nowadays. And oftentimes, we don't want people that speak a negative or broken records kind of message. But in reality, we need to look at it from the perspective of the Bible. Delusional culture war in every facet of work of, work of lives, especially of Christians. It seems like we have no moral principle for many people to guide their walks and their relationships with God. And that's what the Bible's kind of pointing us where we miss the mark. And the Bible also show us there's only one way we can find peace. By giving ourselves to understand and to know God, the creator, the maker of life. Unfortunately, some people write that as something that is not feasible or not true. But I would like to invite you, if you have a scripture with you, I would just like to echo one more time the reading of the scripture because we come to hear and read the scripture. 
The wonderful things about the book of Revelation is it's a story it tells in pictures. Just like children, we love to see pictures, and those pictures are worth millions of words. So the massive book of Revelation is given unto us through pictorious images and also with symbols that help us. Maybe we think of those associates of figures and images who will help us remind the story. Revelation chapter 13, I will always, I will attempt to look at verse 1 to verse 4. It's a lot more in this reading. That we, we cover quite a bit the last time we sh- share the message from the Revelations, but a little bit more into it. Then I stood on the sand on the sea. Who said that? John the Revelator. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns. Are you with me so far? It's nice to tell, and we can be able to visualize. Here's the beasts. How many heads? Seven heads. How many horns? Ten horns. How many crowns? Ten crowns. It's just a, quite a unique animal that you, those who beach bombers want to go there and see something rise out of the oceans. It probably scares you. A beast of seven heads, ten horns, ten grounds. What are these things, Lord? We ask as we read. Now the beast which I have saw like a leopard. I think the artists who put a great job, sometimes those artists, they have a nice, I don't know, they're gifted with those visionaries and even put that reality into pen. And that's what it is. The beast which I saw like a leopard, feet were like the feet of a what? Of a bear. And his mouth is like a mouth of a what? A lion. And the dragon gave his power, his throne, and his great authority, as we continue. And I saw one of his head as if it had been mortally wounded. And deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled, followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave the authority to the beast. They worshipped the beast, saying... Who is like the beast? Who is like, who is able to make war with him? So there you are. You see, you go to the beach, and then you see a vicious or a weird rising up from the, from the water. A monster of seven heads. I don't know if you go to the beach and see something over there, you just... Took off and run for life, is that right? You probably call the news media, I've seen something. But what are we looking at here? As I said, it's good to see a story with pictures that we can recall and try to understand what it means. And the Bible and the book of Revelations is communicate through us in that language. Most of Bible scholars recognize the beast with seven heads or seven heels, they call it, is from the vicinity or from the country or Italy or Rome. I'm just, you know, this is if you read history, that seven heels or a city of seven heels is known to be the Rome, which is Italy today. But back then in history, that's where that beast rises. So we recognize that beast is a beast that has seven horns, seven, seven heads, ten, ten horns, and ten grounds. So it has to be a, 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 a metaphoric, it has a, a figurative speech meanings of these things. So now we know probably from 
a country of Italy or Rome. That's where that beast comes from. And the Bible tells us. And then we also learn that the beast has a color of a leopard. Have you ever seen a lion's head and a leopard's body? Maybe a crossbreed of a leopard and a lion. Is that possible? Well, everything's possible in our generation today because of AI. But it's so weird that they, we have an animal, seven heads, had heads of a lion, a body of a bear, body of a leopard, and a foot, feet of a bear. So we ask and we look some more, and the history tells us these beasts is not other than what political powers that rise from the first century and then, you know, work throughout generations as we resemble this beast is actually a mixture of philosophies, mixture of ideologies from Rome, or and also mix of philosophy, the head of a lion. What is head of the lions as prophecy in the book of Daniel represents? Babylon. So therefore, there are some ideas and philosophies from Babylon, some ideas and philosophies and ideology and worldview from Rome. What about the body of a leopard? What country the Bible represents a leopard as a leopard? Greece. So we know that this beast that looks so weird is actually not a beast, but it's a combination of what? Of ideology and philosophies and worldviews blended together. So not only Greece, you know, all of us study and we love to read philosophies from Aristotle, from Plato, Pythagoras, all those hypothetical theories come from the Greece, come from Athens, known to be the brilliant mind of the ancient world. But can you imagine these other peoples of bright mind from different countries? It seems like they are what? Congregate together. And also the, the feet of a bear. What country in the Bibles that represent as the symbols of a bear from the, from the ancient world? It's Persian, right? Meat and Persia. Today it's called Iran. So, so now we know these are the Persians' piece of the pie that connects to this um, combination beast. So we, we realize now this beast that rises out of the sea, as the revelator saw it, is not necessarily a real beast. It's a vision of different group of people, different uh, nations and political background and trainings mixed together and floating up. And we learn as that beast right out of the sea, who else was there to greet the beast from the sea? The dragon. And who do you think who's that dragon is or was? That's right. Now we know, as our society today, there are what? There are secular, secular worldview. There are worldview that could not align with the Bible. There are worldview that what, could not align with Christianity. But it still ex exists today. And I would like to let you know, you and I are living in a society. We have seen all different kinds of worldview. We go to school and listen to different kinds of philosophies. And the bottom line is, what do you preference to take as a truth? Are you with me, church? What, I, what do you, what do you pre preference to choose to believe on based on all this mixture of ideas? Mixture of learning. I guess we can call it, we can end up become what? Very confused. We can become very, very debatable because the louder you become, maybe the more you're very persuasive and convincing to others. I would like to let you know, it's better to yield our what? Our search and our submissions to the what? To the word of God. As we see around us, things happening around us, the fast technology, and we have seen all these teachings and all these perceptions and all this discussion ideology, 
we need to find a solid ground to base our trust and our faith upon it. Are you agree with me? So as we, people are looking, what is the reality? What is going on in our society? And that is the reason why it's very important to look at the Bible. And we look in the Bible in a very, in a, in a very uh, interesting way so that we will not be biased, but just follow the storyline of the Scripture. So now we know, I mentioned earlier, that some in the Bible itself talks about methodori- the, uh, methodical language or images that like water. In the Bible, in the language of prophecy, water means what? Group of people. Nations, tongues, and I just beat this reference from Revelation 17, talks about, tells us when they mention about water, it mentions about people. All right, and the Bible tells us, verse 1, verse 2 of Revelation 17 says, Then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked with me, saying, in, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgments of the drink of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The language is a very, you know, very sensitive, but we look deeper. It, it describes a language of relationship, of a, 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 a what you call, if, if someone who not commits to a relationship. Are you with me, church? So, here we are. Water means what? A lot of people. Different people. Comes together. I don't know if you are uh, able to go and visit in a grade or uh, numbers of people. You will watch this group moving like, a, like an organism. So, the language of mass of people or the sea of people represent here as some power and some political leader hovering over and influence those people. So that's what the Bible, or this is where the reading of the Bible is trying to refer unto us as we understand what is this beast coming out of the water. So we understand now it's, it's not a, a literal meaning of a beast, but actually what? A rising of what? Of worldview, of ideas. And now... John the Revelator, looking at it, and he saw there's another beast that what inspired the, the what? The worldview, the, the perceptions of idea. And who influenced those views? The serpents. Who is the serpent? Satan. And who is Satan? Is the enemy of who? The enemy of God. There are, there are only two enemies. There are only two powers, right? The powers of goodness and the powers of Darkness, and they always fight with each other. So the book of Revelation chapter 13 talks about what? The battle between what? Good and evil. So this morning, so you can sit tight now and say, okay, pastor. So you're going to tell us there is a battle between good and evil. Is fighting within our hearts this morning. How many of you feel like you get the upper hands of that battle between good and evil? Have mercy on us. If we're not for God, if we're not for the Holy Spirit, your mind will be somewhere. Because we are being fed in, fed and also every day, day in and day out, with all this media, with all these communications, that if you don't take time, by your, take time alone to read and study, you just mastermind with all these technologies around us, and we do no longer find who we are. We seem to like that someone's going to dictate who we are. Are you with me, church? Praise be to God. I just want you to know that the only safe haven for us is what? To go to the what? To the Word of God. So the Bible tells us, delusion, I call it delusional culture war. And basically it's pretty a reality today. We try to find out who are the real people that we can trust. Even in our educational, for our children, we've seen day in and day out in the discussions with who, who will best serve our kids, whether give all the trust for to the, to the education teachers or parents and teachers has to compensate. 
The debate is going on. The reason why we have the debate, because we have seen some of the things that is not appropriate according to the word of God that we need to give to our children. It's been given without our knowing it. Are you with me, church? Delusional culture war. And I'm sure, as a parent, you will always think for the best of your children. You always think about who's around your children. And we also want to bring your children to a safe place so that they will what? They will learn, respect, and also what? Develop their development in order for them to become a what? A contributor's people in our society. So the dragons, as we read from the book of Revelation chapter 13, rise up from the sea. And we try to understand what's this, this beast rise out of the sea. And we mentioned a lot of time, the only clue or the only key that we unlock this mystery is going back to the book of what? Daniel. And then we know from the book of Daniel, which the book of Daniel is also is a prophecy language that what forecasts what's going to happen in the future. And then we learn about in chapter 2 and chapter 7 of the book of Daniel, there was a dream that was given to a heathen king named Nebuchadnezzar. And we know about that, that, that dream of a what? Of a head of gold is on the board there. Head of gold represents what kingdom? Babylon. The chest of silver represents what kingdom? Mids and Persia. And then the stomach and thigh of that image represent what kingdom? Kingdom of Greece. And then the feet of iron, according to Daniel chapter 1, as he interpreted the visions that was given to Nebuchadnezzar, the leg of iron represent what kingdom? Rome. And then, interestingly, the toes and the heels of the image, they are a mixture of some elements. What are those elements? Irons and clay. Are you with me? So let me ask you a question. Is that image a real image? Is there a, what's the message, you know, containing that, in that? It's very similar. It's talking about the rise and fall of nations. Are you with me? So when Daniel interpreted the visions of Nebuchadnezzar and give it to him the explanation, he said, O king, after you, the great king of Babylon, we represent the gold, head of gold, or the lions. There will be another king. There will be another kingdom follow you. And we know as we study and hear and read the Bible, did it come true? Praise the Lord. Those visions and those prophecies came true exactly as it was, as it were. So now we can put our trust in the word of the prophets because history justify and history illuminate and even what validates those claim, and those are the visions. As Nebuchadnezzar said, Daniel, that, is, that wisdom is not from anyone else. It only comes from who? From God above. Who's the one that gives the visions to? To Daniel. Not only a first vision of chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, but there was also another vision that was given to Daniel himself. And he saw four beasts. The four beasts in the book of Daniel chapter 7 is the vision of the what? Of the lion. Are you with me? A lion. What, what other beast that Daniel saw in his vision? A leopard. A leopard. That's, but that's a third one. What's the coming after the, the lions? A bear. a bear. And then after a bear comes a leopard. And then the fourth beast was a furious. It was a vicious. There's no name. It was a scary monster. What represents that, that, that beast? Rome. So now you see the image of metallic image and also the beast, that different animal, is speak the same what? The same language. And we say, oh, thank you, Lord, that we are not in the darkness, that you still give us the clue of how to understand the mystery and also the message that's given to the first generation and the generation to follow. As we look at that faithfulness of the Bible, my friend, allow us to look at the message that was given to John, the revelator in the book of Revelations. Praise be to God what you say. Because the Old Testament help us to unlock the mystery of the New Testament, which is in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And actually the book of Revelation, the whole, whole series of visions and the book of Revelations given unto us it was given in those images or coded 
or even metaphor language, pictorial language, and preserve for generations to come. We may ask, wow, why didn't God give the message in English? Why did God give the message in Arab? Well, they gave it to us, Farsi and Babylon, all those languages. But if you look at it, it was given in a pictorial language that every person can what? Relates to it in their own cultural context. Praise be to God. God is a fair God, right? God is even love to know who you are so that you will not be misinterpreted by another person of a different ethnicity. So here we are. So Rome, because the animals, the fourth animals in the Revelation chapter, in Daniel chapter 7, is a beast with seven heads, just exactly, and, all, and also have what? Ten horns. So now that seven heads is on the, 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 the beast that rises out of the sea. And it looks like a lesson, looks like a, 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 a lion. So we have Rome, we have Babylon, we have the body of a leopard. That it means what? We have what country? Greece. And then we have the, the feet of a bear. So now we have what? Babylon, Persians, Greece, and Rome. And then when you look at that first vision, which is the metallic, the toes represent the mixture of what? Of clay and iron. There's one other piece of that vision that we hardly get to it when we explain the vision. Let me tell it to you. That vision was a metallic image, and there was a rock that was broke out of the mountain and rushed down the hill. And what happened to the, to the image? It's destroyed the image. If the, if the, if the, if the, if the prophecy is a, is a metaphoric and a different message, what kingdom would, would, would we say that that rock represents? The Bible tells us it's the kingdom of God. So if you are the thinking people, we are the thinking people in the 21st century, you say, okay, so now Babylon's came and gone. Mid, Mid and Persian came and gone. Uh, Greece, Alexander the Great, rise up in the occasion, left. And then the Roman Empire came and left. So what left of the image now? The iron and clay and the toes. And that the Bible tells us and historian tells us, those are the divisions of the empire of the Roman Empire. And what kingdom has not yet been appeared in a scene yet? What kingdom? The rock kingdom, can you say amen? And that is the claim of the Christians. That kingdom is surely is just about to what? To come. Whew. Thank you, Pastor. I would like to let you know the role and the purpose of the church is to emphasize this historical truth so it will become in the front of your mind to remember, to understand, as we look at what's happening around us, do not forget the word of prophecy. It is a guiding light for us in a darkness world. And I appeal to you, you need to spend some time to read the word of God and give some clues, like I mentioned, even refer to it, and how to understand what is ahead of us. So we call about culture, delusional culture war. What is delusional culture war, Pastor? I'm not as smart as this helpful professor. I look at look it up and says his website's called helpfulprofessor.com. <laughs> and this is what this guy says: culture, a group of people who share a common set of value and beliefs. They may also share cultural elements like language, festivals, rituals, and ceremonials. Are we good so far? All right. And there is a little, a little variation there. There is a high culture and there is a low culture. We just follow to this uh, smart guy's definition of culture. The low culture, the culture beliefs and activities practices by the mass. Example, enjoy gossip magazine pop music, 
reality show, television show. Are you with me so far? That's considered to be the what, high or low? Low. What about high culture? High culture practiced by the elites. It can include practice, uh, participating in theater, opera, fine arts, horse riding, and enjoy expensive wines. Are you with me? How many of you enjoy those uh, leisure time? Well, in our generation today, you cannot tell the rich and the what? And the poor. You do not underestimate anybody nowadays. By God's grace, we live in a country that gives all the privilege unto us. It is our disadvantage if we do not have the privilege that this country gives unto us. Can you say amen for that? But the only thing that missed the mark is because when we push aside the word of God, and then when we push aside the word of God among us, who else will take that place? According to the book of Revelations. If we put aside the word of God, rejected God, who will take the place of God? Remember the dragons is creating the what? The beast that comes out of the what? Of the water. If God is not part of the equation, therefore there is another forces that will take the place. Either our human idea or some, someone's prop projected something that we need to hang on because we are not smart enough to do something. But I would like to let you know, submit yourself to the Word of God. Are you with me, church? God give us the mind. God give us the understanding. But most of all, God, God gives us the what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that bless those who fear God. Just like the prophet. The prophet spent times in prayer and reading and study. And the Holy Spirit blessed them with the message from God. And I pray and I, and I pray and appeal to you. Spend some time in prayer. Communion with the Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit guide you as we study. And let the highlights of the word of God come in the forefront of our walk daily. Some examples of culture. Youth culture. You know, I have a twins at home at our house. It seems like we speak in a different language. Every time I try to say something, they say, Daddy, that was old. That, that's old. You need to come up. on." I say, okay, where can I fit in these conversations? But when they want some help financially, Daddy, I need some help. Maybe that's a common language there. Culture, youth culture. Media culture, internet culture, dominant culture, subculture, and also what? Counterculture. I would like to let you know, there are so many cultures, there are so many behaviors, there are many beliefs. But praise be to God for you and for me, because we share a common culture based on the word of God, what you say. If we're not for the word of God, I will probably come with some weird idea. If I'm persuasive enough, I probably have some followers with me. And that is what we call the what? Delusional culture war. But praise be to God, we have the word of God. The book of Timothy tells us, you know, we have the word of God given unto us. It's better for us that what uh, all scripture is given by the what? Spirit of the Lord is good for teachings, rebuking. It's good for what? For instruction, educational in order to prepare men and women for the what? For the good works to serve others. Can you say amen? As we continue, religious culture. There are so many church culture practices. That's fine. But we have to be harmonized in the what? In the doctrines and also the understanding of the word of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Are you saying amen? And the word of God incarnated his history from generation to generation and make available for us. Praise be to God. No wonder why Christians, when they come together in prayer, when they come together to share, when they come together to mourn, when they come together, they feel closer compassionately to each other. I praise the Lord and I give God the glory that you and I love the Word of God. 
I may overread the scripture. I may overinterpret, but maybe you will, will tap my shoulder, Pastor, maybe could it be, or, may, or maybe that's it. And then there's a room of what? We discussion and we kneel down and pray together. Because one spirit, one God, one baptism, and what, what? One Lord. My friend, this morning, as I mentioned, there's so much going on in our society today. And I warn you, before you get into the public arena of debates, make sure you respect people from where they come from. Are you with me, church? And allow God to allow you the authority and the firm to speak with wisdom. I just look at the news and say, doctors debate whether trans teen needs therapy before hormones. Clinicians are divided over new guidelines that say teens should undergo mental health screening before receiving hormones or gender surgeries. If you ask me what my opinion, I've, my opinion comes from where? From the Word of God. Some people have their different opinion from different education, from different experiences. But we need to what? Respect them as well, what you say. But lovingly, lovingly and prayerfully that ask God... Only God can reveal the truth in the hearts of people and also with the gentleness. The Bible tells us, you shall be what? Be as wise as serpents and be as gentle as what? As dove. Christians should not be in the front line debating and ready to go his hands. Christians should be a loving, compassionate and always listened and ready to give the word of wisdom. What you say? God will allow whatever confusions we have in our, we know, we know the right from wrong. But God will change people's heart. And I pray as we move forward and see the things happening around us, allow your hearts to be baptized, allow your study to be framed and shaped by the word of God. In times of prayer, in times of Bible study, in times of sharing, in times of hearing and listening and supporting and give compassion for those who lost hope. Here's the Bible tells us, and the great dragon was cast out of heaven, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the world, he has cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So now, we know from the scripture, from the reading of the Bible, that this world was created by the image of our, was created by the greatness, the wisdom of God, and you and I were created by the image of God. Can you say amen? We are not brought of something ex accident and swirling for a million years, and all of a sudden, I'm here today. We are not a product of an accident. We are here by what? By design. Can you say amen for that? I am and you are a son and daughters of a living God. Can you say amen? And that's all I need. Whoever gives me out a story, good for them. But we know that the devil was able to what? To destroy that environment, that safe space that was given to humanity. And we know there is pain and shame. There is suffering. There is anxieties. Lord, have mercy on us. But let not your heart be troubled. Even though we live in this darkness world, we lost the glory of God. But the Bible tells us God sent his son through the message of prophecy, Jesus Christ, the son of God. People do not believe in Jesus Christ because they don't believe in the Bible and they don't word, believe in the word of prophecy. But I would like to let you know, God sent His Son, Christ Jesus, that He can be a, a mediator, an advocator, and a redeemer for all of us. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us, Woe to the earth, the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is what? You know, when you have some assignments to do that need to be turned in for the professor in the next day and you haven't started, what happened to you? 
your heart is bounding. You are you, 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 you pacing all over, try to grab anything to put together. <sighs> They're always a what? They're always a, a deadline. The time is short. The devil, he knows that this time is coming and the judgment of God, he will call into judgment. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman and gave birth Woman, who gave birth to a male child? Let me pour that and say, who's that woman represent here? Who's that woman? What is she doing there? Who is that woman? The church. You and I have this image of a virgin, of a beautiful, of a glorified woman. Praise be to God. Ladies, you have the beauty. You have the symbol of perfection. It's going to say amen. Maybe you don't believe in that. Women has the beauty, the, praise the Lord. And the church symbolized by that symbol, the symbol of a woman, a pure purity of a woman, pure, woman that know that his relationship with the master. And you and I can be the woman, the bride of God. And the dragon was raged with the woman. And who's that ch male child that she gave birth to? Who's the male child? Christ Jesus, the church. The church is the only access by the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church will preach and live and survive by preaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The language of prophecy is very metaphorically, but it tells us the woman pregnant with the child means the woman is what? Passionate with his baby or the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say amen. The great controversy has been intensified. Now, let me go back and take you to the book of Daniel. When Daniel explained the vision that was fulfilled, remember that metallic I start our conversation, our, our message with? When Daniel finished the explanations of that, and then he said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, Oh, oh, king, leave long the king. I just let you know that there is one more kingdom that will be coming, and that's a kingdom rock. The rock that was come out of the rock without hands touched, but roll down and smite the image. Destroy that image, the image of nations, the image of Babylon, the image of Mids and Persian, the image of uh, Greece, the image of Rome, and all the human knowledge. It means when God comes, He will what put to, put to an end all human ideas, human philosophies. This, this is what you call a humanism ideas. You are a God. I am God. We don't need God up there. You and I and our fixed imagination, if we put our hearts into it and add some AI into it and also some new, we will be able to create and recreate, but we never live forever. Are you with me? Nice narrative. But all we need to do is to what? I give my life to God because He has the power over death. I suffer, I cry, but when I look at the Lord, He suffered for me, that's all I need. But also beyond the shadow of death, there is what? There is resurrection for the glories and life forevermore. Daniel said to the king, that kingdom rock is about to come. Here's what the Bible says, And in that day of these kings to God, the God of heaven, will set up His kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break pieces of and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. And that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God has made known to the kings what will come to pass after this. And the dream is certain, and interpretation ensures, amen. If the word of prophecy was exactly true and come to pass, and he talks and shares with us in the word of prophecy about what is looming before us, and we are facing what it is, the, what, the mixture of different teachings, it crowded and brought a shadow on us. We shall not be afraid. 
because God has a final saying. Can you say amen? Revelation chapter 18 talks about this, this beast. All right? Bear with me as I read the Revelation chapter 18. It talks about when we move to the other extreme, God and His love and the angels and Holy Spirit, and then we move to the other power, the power of the dragon, the power of, of, the, of the darkness, the power of the enemy of God. And the, and the Bible tells us, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath on the fornications. The kings of the earth have committed fornications with her. Who's her? The fallen church. There are two, there are two women's. The virgins or the glorious or the pure the woman and also the fallen woman also represent the what? The fallen church. Are you with me, church? That's the fallen church that is right is what? In, in what? In, 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 in bed with the what? With the circular world. Follow the reading. For all nations have drunk of the wine of a wrath of the, her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And merchants of the earth and wax reach through the abundance of her delicacy. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not be partake of her sin, and that he receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Rewards even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her work. In the cup which she had filled, filled her to her trouble, doubles, how much she has Glorify yourself and live del deliciously. So much torment, the sorrow give her. So she said in her heart, I sit as a queen and I am no widows and shall see no sorrow. There are other fallen church. A fallen church is come now, is in confederacy with the what? With other world, world um, ideas. Here's the spirit, what the spirit of prophecy says. And I saw one head as it were wounded to death, and these deadly wounded were healed, and all the world wandering after the beast. Revelation 13, 14. And then it says, In a homeward, in a homage to the papacy, the United States will not be alone. The influence of Rome in countries that once acknowledged her dominion is still far from being destroyed. In the last conflicts, the Sabbath will be the special point of controversy throughout all Christendom. Secular rulers and religious leaders will unite to enforce the observance of the Sunday and a milder measure of fail, the most oppressive law will be enacted. It will be urged that the few who stand in opposition to as institution of a church and a law of the land ought to be tolerated. Romanitians in the old world and apostate Protestantism in the new will pursue a similar course toward those who honor the divine precepts. Are you with me, church? There's going to be a fallen away church, and it will join with a humanism and secular worldly view, and they pursue those who are opposition against their worldview. My friends, I would like to let you know, just like in times of Moses, and the people of God in Egypt, they were harassed and oppressed. So do will be those who will be in the end of the world. You and I, because we are standing on the Bible, some of the Bible's philosophy and ideas is contrary with the popular view. And they will come after those who claim to be you are the source of all these confusions. My friend, the Bible tells us, let us not be afraid because the Bible tells us there is a rock kingdom to come. Hallelujah, say amen. And that day we read that rock will come. Smite the feet of an image. But that kingdom will be what? Will establish and debuild forevermore. My friend, this morning I saw another angel fly in the mid heaven. Having an everlasting gospel to preach to the whole dwell on earth. To every nation, to every tongue, and to any people, saying in a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of the judgment has come. Worship Him who made heaven and the earth, the sea, the springs of water. The gospel has been what? Preached to the whole world. And what comes after that? 
the kingdom of God. You should be a rock kingdom builder. You should be a rock kingdom advertiser and promoter. You should be a rock kingdom campaigner. Glorify God that there is an eternal kingdom for those who believe in God. My friend, this morning, the message to the fallen church, those who no longer twisted, there are so many Christians, I'm very, very respectful with saying, there are people who think the Bible is not inspired. There are other people who say that the, the narrative of the Bible is, is, is not right. We should submit ourselves to God, but not to change the word of God. And the Bible tells us, come out of her, Babylon. We know that there is a last message to give out. If you're not aligned with the Bible, with God, I appeal to you, give yourself to God. Come out of her. Come out of the worldly. The Bible tells us, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and faith in Jesus Christ. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, say the Spirit, that they may rest for their labors and their words follow them. I would like to let you know, when we rest in the Lord, as we serve God, the Bible tells us the good works will follow us because there is a day of resurrection and there is a new day that we will be glorified together with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not only we come with that, but if the Bible tells us, blessed is he, blessed is she who read, who hear, and to keep the word of what? The word of prophecy. Blessed is he who read and those who hear and the word of prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is what? For the time is near. My friend, this morning, so much to unfold, but I would like to let you know, I want you to give yourself a moment and give yourself at times to work your relationship with God. If we don't do our relationship in our development, our reading and studying and caring for each other, the world is already have a plan for each one of us. And I would like to assure you, the rock kingdom is coming. Not only it come out of her, my people, but also bless are those who read, bless are those who Understand and bless are those who what who keep the word of God. It will be a light to your path and a lamp to your feet. By God says, may God be with you, my friends. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that we have time to worship, times to prayer, times to fellowship, and times to give your talents. Whatever talent you have, if you are good, a good chef or a cook, Come to the church. Maybe you bring some potluck and you enjoy that wonderful gift you have. Whatever gift you have, find ways to use your gift and God will bless you abundantly. Shall we pray? Father God, thank you for allowing us to share and reflect on the word of God. Thank you for the word of prophecy. May the word of God speak in our hearts and transform us into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.